Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. Uh, I'm Wes, and today I'm gonna be showing you the FT Tiny Whoop SE. These little guys are a collaboration we did with uh, Tiny Whoop, and to bring an easy all-in-one kit for building your first micro drone. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna show how to build it. So we're gonna take everything out of the box from scratch and put it all together. Bind it to the RadioMaster T8 light radio, and we're also going to go through how to change settings on it, such as your video channel, for when you go and fly with your friends. So let's go ahead and get everything out of the box, and let's get started. So we're going to start opening up the box. And we're just going to lay out all of our contents here. We're going to have the camera, propellers, screwdriver, this is our flight controller mounting equipment, our charger our motors, our flight controller, our battery, our frame, and finally, our camera mount. So first thing we're gonna start with is we're actually going to go ahead and grab the charger and the battery. So we're just gonna open this up. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna plug the battery into a USB port, like so. You'll see all the lights start to flicker. That means it's ready to charge. And you can just pick any one of the six ports, plug your battery into it. And you'll see the light turns on solid green. When that light turns off, that means the battery's done charging. So we'll just set that aside so that way our battery's good and charged and we're ready to build. Next, we're gonna take our frame. We're gonna go ahead and open up the case and pull the frame out here. And one thing you're going to want to notice is the battery tray You'll see one part has little fingers that go all the way to the front and one part has the uh, no fingers in the front area. We're actually going to go ahead and we're going to put those little fingers. Those are actually going to go to the back of the, the aircraft. So from right now, it is facing forward. So next we're going to take and open up our motors. And even though all the motors look the same, they're the same gold color, there actually is two different ones. One of them has blue and red wires, and the other ones have black and white wires. Those are your clockwise and counterclockwise rotating. So we're going to start with the black wires, and we're going to go ahead and feed them through the frame. So one of the black and whites is going to go into the, from facing the rear, the back right side. Once we get in there, we're just going to give it a little bit of a push and you want that wire to come out towards the middle. It should set all the way down. Then we're gonna take the other one and we're gonna put it in the complete opposite side. So this one's gonna go in the front left. And uh, one thing that's important to remember is you wanna push on the top of the motor, but not the top of the shaft. If you push on the top of the shaft, you'll probably stab your finger and that's not gonna feel great. And then I'm going to go ahead and rest my fingers underneath the little supports. I'm just gonna press that in there. It should just slide right in. So now we're gonna fill the other two spaces up with our red and blue wires. Again, we're just gonna toy with them until they poke out the sides there. Then push on both sides, right down with the motor shaft between your thumbs. We'll stick the last one in there. Do the same thing again. Press it in. And one thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're actually gonna go ahead and take the tip of the wire and we're gonna lightly spin it. Just enough so that way it makes it so it's like there's one wire. Doesn't matter which way you rotate it. We just wanna do it lightly and it shouldn't take a lot of force. Once, it's, once you see it's nice and tightly wrapped, you can let go and those two wires will stay together. This will make it a little bit easier later when we go to put the flight controller in to get the wires tucked away so they don't get caught on anything. All right, so we're gonna pick it back up and we're gonna remember that the little fingers are facing towards the rear. We're gonna set it down and next we're gonna take out our flight controller. So the flight controller has little arrows on top pointing which way is the front, but another good way to remember is the battery lead's actually gonna come off the back. So we'll be sticking it on just like that. But before we do that, we're gonna do our camera. So we're gonna open up our little camera box here. And inside, find a little camera with a wire on it. First thing we're gonna do is there's a little lens cap on the tip of the camera. So we're just gonna slide that right off. It should just pop right off. 
and you can save that for if you ever need to take your camera out and store it. It helps keep the lens from getting scratched. And then we're gonna take the little 3D printed camera mount and we want the camera wires facing up. So camera wires facing up, we just wanna put it in there. It's gonna be a bit of a tight fit, but you're just gonna line it up. Again, with those camera wires facing straight up into the air, it should just pop right into place. Just like that. So now we have a camera on a mount with the wire ready to be plugged in. And we'll go ahead and take care of that. So if we flip over the flight controller, you'll see the four motor ports facing straight down. And then this one port over here is gonna be facing sideways. It's actually gonna be where we plug our camera in. So you wanna have it so that way the black wire on your camera plug is facing towards the back of the drone. It'll just insert right into place and plug right in. We're already getting really close to getting everything put together and finishing it. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our little hardware bag here. And we should have four screws and four little rubber standoffs. We're just gonna take each of the four little rubber standoffs and slide them onto the frame posts. There'll be a frame post in between each of the motor ducts. So slide them in there. So that way the, the little notch cut in it is facing up actually be where our flight controller sits. And then we're going to take our flight controller and we're just going to hold the camera up and out of the way and we're just going to sl just slide the flight controller so that the little fingers on it fit right into the grooves on the little rubber standoffs. There we go. Once we have all those lined up, again we're just going to set the camera to the side there and we're gonna go ahead and put in the back screw. We're not gonna put any of the other ones in quite yet because those are also what's gonna hold our camera on. So we'll just take this one screw. Let me get this little antenna out of the way. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our three screws and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to poke them through the holes on the camera mount. Might take a little bit of force just to push them through. We just want them to poke out just like this other two in there as well and then when you go to put the camera on little camera wire you want to make sure the camera wire goes over the mount if it goes under the mount it can actually tilt the camera off to the side a little bit but it won't hurt anything it just looks a little bit nicer with it going over so go ahead and line up the very front screw and we'll just do a few turns just until we feel it start to grip that way we're not dealing with it all fully tightened yet line up another side screw and just get it to where you start to feel it grip into the plastic. Sometimes the screw misses the little plastic post that's inside and so you just give it a slight little pull up and you should feel it begin to grip. That one I missed the plastic post so we'll just reline it up and try again. So our next step here is we're actually going to go ahead and put the propellers on. Now, just like the motors, the propellers do matter where they go because there are two different types. You have the clockwise and the counterclockwise. And they will go opposite sides of each other. And so what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna have the leading edges of the propellers pull into the side of the drone. So we'll be having a clockwise propeller and we'll be sticking that on the rear left. We just push her on there. Don't have to push too hard, just enough to get the stick to the motor shaft. So we got one of our propellers on. Now we're gonna take the propeller that spins the same direction. So this is also going to be a clockwise propeller. And we're gonna stick that on the front right. So we're just gonna line up the shaft and just press it in place. Then we're gonna take the other counterclockwise. That's gonna go on the front left and the rear right. Now we just have one more thing to do to the aircraft itself. We're going to flip it over and we're going to plug in our wires. So we're going to plug in the wires to the plugs that are right next to them, right next to the motors. And you'll see the little, little connection pieces that stick out. 
this side with the two little silver specks that you can see will go facing towards the inside of the quad. And there we go. And then to make it look a little bit cleaner, we're actually just gonna go ahead and we're gonna fish the wires underneath the frame. There should be plenty of space to do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. This just makes it look a little bit neater. And there we go. And that's the aircraft itself built. So next we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're actually gonna show you how to bind to the T8 light radio. So this radio, we have it set up to be just like how it comes out of the box. We're gonna go ahead and get it ready and turn it on. It should come on with a green light to tell you it's ready to go. But if you have any of the switches or anything in a different spot, it might turn on and flash red and make some angry noises. We're just gonna push all the switches back and push the throttle all the way down and it should turn green telling us we're ready to go. And then there's a little cover piece on the back. There's a button inside. The cover piece helps prevent you from accidentally pressing it. You can still press it with the screwdriver by reaching in and we'll need to do that later. But if you don't have the screwdriver handy, you can always slide the cover piece off and get to it with your finger. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our battery and we're gonna slide it into the bottom of the drone. should fit to where the battery label faces down. We're gonna go ahead and plug it in. So first thing we're gonna see is the lights are gonna to begin to flash slowly. This is just telling us that it's looking for a signal. It's not seeing one. And what we're gonna do is there's a little button. It should be nearby the same side that has the camera connector. It's a little button and it says bind. We're gonna go ahead and just press and hold that. It should begin to flash fast. This is telling us that it's in bind mode. So we're gonna take our T8 light and we're gonna reach back there and press that button in the back until we hear it start beeping. That double beeping means that it's in D16 mode. Most of the T8 lights are gonna come in D16 mode and that's not gonna work for this drone. So once we get that double beeping, we're just gonna press the button one more time really quick. So we're gonna put it back into bind mode and we're gonna press that button one more time and it should begin single beeping. And then our drone stopped flashing. It's now doing a little bit slower of a flash and that's telling us that we are bound. So then if we hit our arm switch, we're ready to go. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is actually how to change the channel on the video transmitter. So to show that, we're gonna get our little monitor and it should automatically tune in on your first time starting up to the channel F1, or a lot of times it's called Fast Shark 1, and on some devices they even show it as I1. But it should be one of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and we have the, on the monitor, we're gonna push up on the uh, pitch stick, so the stick on the right hand side, and we're gonna to go to the middle and over to the left on the other stick and it should open up a menu. And the first thing we're gonna see is there's a little arrow and that arrow is telling us what we're selecting. So we're gonna move that little arrow down to features and we're gonna go down to VTX SA, which is Video Transmitter Smart Audio. And then once we're in here, we can see all the different bands. So we can select Fat Shark, Race Band, Boss Cam E, Boss Cam B, Boss Cam A. If you ever go to an event in which you're flying with other people, usually they'll be able to help you uh, and they'll have channels pre-selected that they're gonna have everyone go to. So in this case, let's say we need to go to Fat Shark 2. So we're gonna select Fat Shark. And for channel, we're gonna select two. And then we're gonna go down to set. And then we're gonna go ahead and confirm this. And our screen's gonna disappear. So now if we take our goggles and we tune into Fat Shark 2, so my goggle shows up as I band. And there we go. And then to get out of this menu, we're gonna go ahead and go down to back. We're gonna go all the way down to save and exit. And that'll save it. So now if we go to change batteries and we plug back in, 
it'll boot us back up to channel two. And we should be ready to go. Uh, down in the bottom corner, you'll see the battery voltage. It says 3.9 volts right now. That's because this battery is not fully charged yet. Fully charged, the battery is gonna be between 4.1 and 4.3 volts. Uh, and you'll want to go ahead and land it. Once you start getting down to around 3.3, 3.2 volts, uh, there should also be a little pop-up that tells you low battery, and that's to let you know that you will want to come back and land it. All right, so now everything's bound up and programmed and ready to go, and now you're ready to go out and do some flying and have some adventures with a Ultra Micro Drone.